Some people have said that the climate battle will be won or lost in Asia Pacific. So what makes finance and climate finance in Asia Pacific different or special? It's urbanizing rapidly. You get much higher levels of um, consumption that you know, result in emissions. On one hand, Asia Pacific, particularly Asia, really need to cut down on emissions. But then it's also on the front lines because it's so deeply impacted, with many countries being amongst the most vulnerable to climate. That's why the battle will be won or lost here. I come from a rural area in Pakistan. You can call us uh, subsistence farmers. We know the impact of climate change. When I was a kid, we used to have cotton uh, in our area. Uh, we used to have a lot of rice. But because of the changing weather, because of water scarcity, these two have disappeared over the period of time. Nowadays, we see examples in Mongolia where herders have to be moved off their land so they can build a dam where now the lifetime of that dam may be extremely short due to climate change because the Altai Mountains are losing their glaciers and so that dam by the time it's built may not have enough water behind it to generate electricity. I don't think we can think about development without thinking about sustainability and so finance is really the next question since that's one of the main barriers. Where do we find the money for that transition to allow for an equitable and timely transition? Climate finance facilitates climate action. And to me, climate action is very important area for investment because it's something that we feel and experience as individuals that we need to have solutions for. So we need a lot of uh, technological, financial and capacity building related innovations uh, to achieve this. So when we say the need, I mean globally they estimate by 2030 we need to be spending at least four trillion dollars, not billions, trillion dollars. Currently it is only 300 billion dollars. So we need to enhance our finance uh, by at least four times or six times. And finance is key because finance mostly comes from what countries spend themselves in terms of their budgets and what they mobilize domestically. And in terms of private investment, it, you know, those flows tend to go to where they can make the most, most highest returns or where there are regulatory or other imperatives in terms of carbon credits or emission or reduction. And so it's quite skewed. Many of the countries that really need finance don't necessarily have access to it. There has been a pledge by developing countries under the Paris Agreement to reach $100 billion per year in terms of climate finance from developed to developing countries, but they are still far from achieving that threshold. Now governments are also discussing a new collective goal that will replace this target, but we still know that you know, um, climate finance is scarce. And most of the climate finance which are being transferred to these countries are mostly for mitigation. If you invest the mitigation, you have an opportunity to uh, decrease the cost of the adaptation. But if you fail uh, on the mitigation issues, we have already seen that the adaptation cost is increasing. I mean, climate change is a global issue, but adaptation is really local. And we, when we think about climate change, you know, the effects of climate change are really being felt mostly at the local level. And when we talk about the local level, we're talking about communities, right? Especially in countries where don't have the means to actually address the issues. When we talk about the vulnerability of the people, we're looking at adaptation finance specifically. And for climate finance to work, in order to address those vulnerabilities, the decision making has to also be equally available to those at the margins. So women, indigenous people, people living with disabilities, and the poor. They have to be part of that conversation. We normally describe a whole of government approach to climate finance, but we should be thinking about a whole of society approach to tackle climate change. and. Uh, in the climate finance space, therefore, the role of the governments is important as we know, but uh, at the same time, the role of the private sector, the role of the civil society, and the role of citizenry, per se, becomes equally important.